Keith Richards said, it's, it's such a good quote. He said, so, for him personally, and this you know, resonated with me, is songwriting is, is a conglomeration of experiences, which I think is like, you know, one line might sound very direct and it is at somebody, but it's like at, you know, these experiences, you know. So my name is Gabe Schillinger. I'm a member of the production team, The Legion. We used to go by The Slap Boys. I'm also a studio owner, and I am the spokesperson for the Bay Area Producers Conference, which is an annual conference. So for me, pretty much the role of a music producer is to oversee the whole creation of a song. And so there's like a lot of roles I can go into creating a song. There's, you know, a, a songwriter, there's an artist, there's an engineer, you could have an A&R guy, you could, you know, there's all these kind of roles and different people can play those different roles and you'll see that it gets real fluid, like there's not, it's not really so defined, usually like, you know, the producer does exactly this and exactly that, um, but for me the producer is really responsible for overall, so it's responsible for making sure they get the best performance out of the you know the artist or the vocalist making sure that the music sounds right making sure that the mix is right so depending on how hands-on they are that could be actually doing the mix you know sitting down and mixing it themselves my my friends and my family like I pull things from that because like it, it's obvious if it's not real like if you're not rapping about something that actually happens to you and like that's the difference between a good song and a and like a decent song definitely listening to music inspires me like those artists like Kid Cudi and Drake, obviously, but also like if something happens like at school or at home, like and it triggers something, like like I need to like make a song. Definitely, like the best songs come out of like when you're really mad or really, actually probably just really mad. Uh, like you just you get like, I mean a lot of people like some people like fight or some people like hit something like you just take it out on the keyboard and just kind of like just try to get what you're feeling. Try to like there's somebody else feeling the same thing. Try to make a song that when they hear it they can relate and connect. There's some songs that like I don't even like listen to because I don't want to relive it because it, it sucks, but like other ones like I'll remember exactly like what I was doing when I was writing it, what like was going through my head and like what influenced it. And that's that's like kind of like a picture almost, but on a track, so it's a lot better. Sometimes, you know, if I'm making a beat or I'm working on something, I'll just kind of get in that zone where I'm not really thinking about anything else. I'm completely focused on what I'm doing. And so I'm not worrying about, you know, whatever else is going on in my life. Um, and you can kind of get into that zone from like, you know, playing sports or doing any kind of art or different activity. You know, there's a lot of ways to get to that. Um, and definitely, you know, producing or making beats can be a great way to do that. It can be, especially if you're working with other people, that can be the toughest process because everybody has a song, you know, it's the same song, but it's, a, you know, you're hearing something different in your head and, you know, well, some person wants to get one thing out that the other person doesn't really agree with or you know vice versa and it can get difficult it's it's definitely harder when you were somebody else and um but like at the same time they they can influence you and change up your style because sometimes you get caught like when you're just making your own songs you get caught making the same kind of songs but when you're somebody else they can inspire you to do something else i started off like i think probably most people do making beats on my own and um so I got really used to being like, okay, this is what I want it to sound like, or this is the next thing that I think would be cool, and maybe I wouldn't even think about it that much. I'd be like, well, yeah, that's what I want to do, so I'll throw that in there. Um, when I started collaborating with people at first, it can be really tricky because you might have two different ideas of where something should go, or um, you have to really set your ego aside, too, because I remember when I was first making beats, I just... I think I really followed, like, it almost just came to me because I, maybe was, I wasn't thinking about it so much, so I just do the next thing. And then all of a sudden, when you have somebody else there, it sort of forces you to make a decision of, like, okay, well, are we going to do this or this? Um, but as I got more experience with it and got better at it, now I feel like my best work has been, you know, collaborating with people because I know what my limitations are and what I'm best at. And so if I can work with somebody who complements that really well, like maybe they're really good at the things that I'm not as good at and vice versa, um, then we can end up with a better, a better end result.
you can YouTube like a thousand people who've covered like any song, but you can't find people like the special people, the people that make their own songs and then rap it, and it sounds good, and it sounds professional. And that's that's what makes the difference. I remember when I was first starting out, I was I'd get real stuck on that, like okay, well, what, how do you do it? Like, what's the process? And I found that um, trying different things is good. It can be it can be really tough when your job is to be creative. Like that's it's it's almost you know it doesn't quite sound right. Like it's a lot easier to. Um, you know, if you're a doctor, you just show up and you problem solve, or you, you know, you there, you know, this is what I, what I'm going to do. It's already set out in an exact format, and, and I'm sure with every job, you're doing some type of improvisation and making things up on the fly. But especially if your job is making music or some kind of art, I mean, it's, you know, creativity usually just kind of comes to people, and so if you make it your career, you have to figure out how to do it consistently, which is almost impossible you know some people are better at it than others um, I know for me and most people I've talked to they tend to have ups and downs and it can last days or weeks or months sometimes where you know they're just on fire and just like you know they feel like they're doing their best work you know or I feel like I'm doing my best work and um, feeling great about things and then I'll have a streak where it's like man like nothing is sounding good I'm getting frustrated um, and that can sort of compound on itself. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll start with some drums. Um, just for me, that's usually more often than not, just for me personally, that's kind of where I get my inspiration from. I'm a little more inspired by rhythm maybe than pitch a little bit. Um, so I might, you know, come up with just, you know, some sort of simple drum loop. Um, then maybe, you know, come up with some chords, um, come up with like some chord changes. Um, then maybe do a bass line, then maybe some kind of melody, you know, so that's just one way that I might go about it. I could um, go about it, you know, I might have a melody first. Um, I might be collaborating with the songwriter and maybe they already have a song written and I just need to build around that. So I already have sort of the format or the chord changes or whatever. I just need to format it to that, so it can kind of go a lot of different ways. The creative, creative process, I think, is all you know. Who, who do you listen to, kind of? And you know, some people are really lucky, and they just pick up an instrument. And it sounds amazing, you know, yeah. Jimi Hendrix guys like that. For me, though, it's it's back to that kind of conglomeration of experiences. But in, experiences in this case is you know what you listen to, what you know, what, what for lack of a better word, turns you on when you put it on, you know. And I guess how do you? That's something that always surprised me when I would jam with my band. It's kind of like I can hear, you know, the music we listen to, and even in, so, you know, can get individual bands sometimes. But then you can't. Right when you can get your finger on it, it's gone. For me, I think it's really important, especially when you're starting out, um, to listen to your favorite producers and copy them. Like it, it sounds, it sounds bad, you know. But really, that's the way that you're going to learn. And even it's a great exercise to actually listen to, you know, a beat that you really like. And, and rec try and recreate it exactly. Like try to just remake that beat. And what that's gonna force you to do is really critically listen to it and go, okay, well what kind of sound is that? Even if you just copy, like even try to copy somebody else, you're not gonna do it well enough. So you're gonna put your own twist on it. And then that's like a new thing that you have. Like, oh, I can kind of sound like uh, Kanye. I can kind of sound like Drake. And I mix them together and it's me and it's, and it's sick.